Someone whose memories go back even further than John Jacobs is Max Faulkner. The son of one of those early professionals, he would have been aware from a very young age that many of life's doors were closed to him. But Dad had no doubts as to where his son's future lay. And my father said, this is a game for you, lad. Now, as soon as you can leave school, and I was at school in Guildford, 14 and a half years of age, my father went to the headmaster and said, uh, look here, my son's going to be a champion. I want my son to only come to school in the morning and to practice his golf all the afternoon. And you know the headmaster let me off. Max started as assistant to his dad, but after the war became one of Henry Cotton's staff at Royal Mint Surrey. A symptom of the times was his contract stipulating he may only enter the clubhouse once a week and then at eight o'clock on a Monday morning to take a shower. Oh, you laugh. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Oliver Wynn and Jack Knipe. Jack Knipe went to America. He was one of the leading assistants. Oliver Wynn was number two. And they walked round out of the pro shop. We had a bog in the pro shop, but Toots and Henry had a lot of clobber in there. It was a bit difficult and awkward to get in. And they went, walked into the main uh, entrance to Rodmetary, went straight to the gents, washed their hands after they got, walked out, and I was in the shop with about four other assistants. Uh, Knight Brothers were there too, and a young fella and uh, a bang came at the hatch, hell of a bang. And I thought, what's this? I opened the door, the secretary was a, he did this a lot at night and he was a bad tempered sort of man. There you are, he said, give that to your number one assistant or to Henry Cotton. And so Jack Knight got hold of it, opened it, and it said, under no circumstances shall Henry Cotton staff Enter the clubhouse forthwith. Sign of the sec. So we weren't anywhere allowed to go near the front of that clubhouse. 